How deep does your fence post really have to be and does it matter? We're gonna test that today in our lab that we have set up. So we have our miniature fence posts here. These are eight inches long and they're gonna replicate eight foot fence posts. We're gonna mark this group at an inch up from the bottom. So that's gonna replicate one foot. This is gonna be two inches and it's gonna represent two feet. And our last group is gonna be three inches and that's gonna represent three feet. This is gonna be our grade marks. So that's all the posts that we're gonna put in the soil. Now how in the heck are you gonna do that in these? So I got a big bucket of dirt hay here. We're gonna equally scoop dirt into each three of these containers. So if I just fill these up all the way to the top and then we start going into the testing of the fence posts, the, the dirt's gonna be too loose. Virgin soil is nice and hard and already compact. This is not virgin soil because it's been disturbed, so we need to get it back to the virgin state of compaction. See how all that air is coming out of the soil? That's what we're doing. We're pulling all the air out by packing the dirt in nice and tight. I think that worked pretty well. Oh, look at that. It's like perfect. So this is gonna be our one foot. This is gonna be our two foot. And this is gonna be our three foot. I think that this dowel is more comparable to a four and a half, five inch wood post. And I think that this dowel right here is a little bit more comparable to a metal post. We're gonna set three on this side. We're gonna set three of the little bit larger ones on this side. Now, I bet you're really wondering, how is he gonna dig a hole in that? Not gonna use this rod right here and we're gonna simulate just knocking a hole. There's one foot, two foot, and three feet. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock this hole right here. I wonder if the, the table has too much bounce in it. I'm having a lot of sluffage back into the hole. I think that the table is moving too much and I need a solid surface. I tried to knock in my second hole and I collapsed my first hole. It keeps on collapsing on itself. Cut some little pegs, put them in the holes to keep the dirt from falling in. Now I'm just gonna use these little dowels just to keep all the dirt from falling in. Okay, there's a one foot mark on that one. This is like a lot harder than it looks. That's one foot, this will be two foot. And here's our three. I feel like I'm making a high-end cake. I mean, just like, oh, be careful. All right, so we have our three different scenarios here. We have one foot, two foot, three foot. And that really sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. We're gonna test concrete versus foam versus driven in all three of these. We don't have a great source of like mini scale concrete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use some quick rock. We use that in the field all the time. It's a great product for filling small cavities. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just Pour this right in the hole. Look at that. Now don't be commenting about my posts aren't plumb because that's not very fair. So that is our concrete and we're gonna let that set up a little bit. We're gonna try to go into post foam, see how much of a disaster we can make because that stuff is so much fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna barely twist these in the dirt. Don't look at it as an advantage because it's not. And when I say I'm barely twisting these in the dirt, I really mean I'm just barely putting them in there. How much do I put in there? I don't know. All right, here we go. Oh, it did work. Oh dude, this is, this is turning out nice. It's turning out nicely. Uh-oh. Remove excess by carefully cutting it with a handsaw or a utility knife. We're gonna have to look at that and see if we can really do that in this case because it's a mini. But if we can, we will, and if we can't, we won't. I told you I didn't know how much foam to put in there. And what do you know? I was right. All three of them overfilled the hole, and we've seen this in the field too. We would really like to be able to see what's going on, but if we leave them the way they are now, we're not gonna be able to see it. So what we need is a hot knife to be able to cut that away. We don't have a hot knife. I 
I think I might owe him a new tool. And he just got done telling me that's my favorite tool in the shop. Well, not anymore. I think we're good. We have to drive the other posts. And the reason I'm doing that now and didn't do it earlier is because I didn't feel it was suitable to do it earlier and compromise the holes. So I figured it was safer to do it after we had all the posts set. Okay, here we have all three of our styles. So we have one foot, two foot, three foot, concrete driven and foam. This is one foot. We're gonna see what happens. Now, are we gonna have a dirt separation from the concrete or for the, from the foam? Is it just gonna pull right out of the dirt because it wasn't set deep enough? Or is it gonna break? We're gonna tie on about three quarters of the way up. So probably about like right there. And as we can see right there already, it's just starting to buckle the topsoil. It didn't even put any stress whatsoever on the post. You saw no flexing from that post. And you can see that it's pulling away from the soil on the back side, and the soil is giving away on the front side, and the post is leaning. It's already leaned over, so that's a fail. There's a little concrete ball. So here's the foam. And keep in mind, we didn't want to cut the top away on this because it is so shallow, we think it's just gonna fail. And you can see that it did exactly the same thing as the concrete. These are our steel replica posts. And we're gonna have the same result because it's just a bigger post. Look at how easy that thing, it didn't even flex the post at all. Some people think that you don't, you don't have to go that far. You know, 12 inches, 18 inches, one bag of concrete. That's what's gonna happen. And we're gonna see this Again, right here, where it pulled away from the dirt on this side because there wasn't enough depth of post in the soil. And here we go again on this side. Now, as far as resistance, the foam did pull a little bit harder than the concrete did. That is kind of ironic. I wish there was a way that we could measure that. Okay, so there's our one foot. You can see right here from our concrete to our foam that we had exactly the same amount of depth in the dirt. Let me grab our two foot. Starting with the concrete, just like last time. Here we go. You can see how hard I'm pulling on that. The post is flexing. Oh, it broke right there at the bottom. Right at the bottom of the concrete, it, it failed. So one foot wasn't sufficient, but two feet. Oh, that's, that's interesting. About the same height, and here we go again. You can see we're pulling pretty hard. It's already pulling away from the dirt on the backside. But is it gonna... Yeah, my wire is just... It broke. This is gonna be a great one. Are we gonna break the post? Is the foam gonna fail? So it did break. It broke right at the top. So you can see it was trying to pull out. It did end up breaking. On this side, our post was weaker than what our hole depth was. Now we, we spent a little bit more money, we bought the next post up, and it pulled right out. It didn't have much flex in that post whatsoever. So now that the post is stronger, the failure point yet again is the hole depth. Putting some tension on it, you can see it's pulling away from the soil on the back side, and it just pulled right out of the soil right there. And here we go on our foam, and just like the concrete, and just like the other one, you can see that the post is stronger than the hole depth. So our failure point yet again is the depth of our hole. All right, here is three feet. We're gonna rush through this side because we already know that those posts are gonna break off because that's what we saw on two feet. It's not gonna be a surprise. And there you could hear our post snap. And it snapped right there at the, right there at the base. The post failed at the top of the foam, the post failed at the top of the ground, or just barely below, the post failed at the top of the concrete. Now we're on three foot set depth with the posts that are comparable to like a steel upgrade post. I don't know what to expect here. We wanna watch very closely around that base to see what happens. On the back side, we can see it pulled away from the soil just a little bit. And there it goes a little bit more. I think it's gonna pull out of the soil. I think we're still gonna have a post, uh, a hole failure right there. This is very like real life right here. The rock in there, that's exactly what they look like when you pull them out of the ground. 
Uh, my guess right now is that our posts are so strong that we're gonna have a hole failure. And here we're already pulling away from the backside. We already have that cavity. The soil is giving away and the post is pulling out. Ultimately on the concrete one, you could see that there was a lot of flex in that post. So the strength of the post was combating against the depth of the hole. And we are pulling this way because this is where we cut away the foam. We're gonna be able to see what happens here. Ooh, this one's really tight too. Oh. I think we're gonna pull out of the foam is what we're gonna have happen. So the post is not breaking, but it did pull out of the soil. You can see that the soil gave way. I would say that these two scenarios are great. We had a great test result on three foot and two foot. Two foot was very interesting. One foot was no surprise whatsoever. Now, I know what you're thinking. The depth that we set fence posts to, anywhere from 30 inches to four feet. It all depends on the job that we're on, but those are our standards. But wait, there's more. So what we did is we took the one foot container, repacked it, and now it's a swamp. You can see that our water level is down here. What's it like with the driven posts in a swamp? Our soil is compromised because it's so saturated with water. Well, we're gonna find out right now. We're gonna drive some posts to two foot, three foot, four foot, and you can see all the way around our beaker here. Yes, I know it's not a beaker. You can see that we also have really great soil compaction. Everything's nice and tight. And we're gonna drive to two feet, three feet, four feet. And just for fun, because who doesn't love it? We're gonna drive to five feet. And then we are also using the heavier posts on this as well. And without a doubt, no flex in the post whatsoever. The soil just immediately gave away. I think, I think we, have, we have a little bit more structure here. We can see that the, the post is starting to bend just slightly, but my guess is underneath that dirt is just causing a trench and that post is just collapsing. Not too hard. You can see that the post is starting to flex quite a bit and putting up a really, really good fight. But given the soil conditions, because it was a swamp, it still failed. Okay, number five, uh, five feet. Let's just take a look on this where five feet is. Five feet's almost at the bottom, so we have about an, two inches potentially in really nice dry dirt. I realize that out in the real world, the swamp is, it goes down for a ways. It broke. Look at how far down it broke. So the failure point in this post was right at the top of the, of the dry ground. What a great test all this has been from here in our lab. If you're setting posts, I recommend you go at least starting at 30 inches and then go to even deeper. It's Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company. We hope you have a good dang day.